Hi Math 117, this is Miss Griffith in my kitchen going over 6.2. This is very similar to 6.1. We are going to create confidence intervals again, okay, but for small samples, okay. Small samples is anytime n is less than 30. So by the end of this lecture, you should be able to interpret the t-distribution. This is a new chart, okay? This is a new chart. It's a new distribution. Uh, there's one in resources. And there is actually a link to this chart in 6.2 assignment as well. You will also learn how to construct and interpret confidence intervals for the population mean when at n is less than 30. All right, so basically when n is less than 30, we are using a different chart. It's called the t-chart. You can also do this on your calculator. So on your calculator, you'd be using t-cdf, all right, or inverse t, or a t-interval, depending on what we're going to do. All right, this next slide, table is still sticky, the sander has not arrived yet. This next slide is essentially saying when sigma is unknown, so sigma is the population standard deviation, when sigma is unknown and n is less than 30, you must remember to use the t distribution. All right, next. This slide is a lot of words, 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 but I want you to look at these two distributions. They both look very symmetrical and single peaked, but this T distribution looks like there is more area in the tails, okay? So it's not as accurate as the standard normal distribution because there is more data in the tails here. Something that you're gonna to need to use for the t-distribution is something called the degrees of freedom. Degrees of freedom is simply n minus one. Remember in stats, n is always the sample size. So for example, if n is 10, your degrees of freedom would just be 10 minus one, and that is nine. All right, t-distributions here, let me just bring this up a little bit more, okay? The spread of the t-distributions is a bit greater than that of the standard normal distribution. Uh, there's more area in the tails. The t-distributions have more probability in the tails and less in the center than the standard normal. But as the degrees of freedom increase, the t-density curve approaches the standard normal curve ever more closely. That's why when n is greater than or equal to 30, we can actually use the standard normal distribution even if sigma is unknown, all right? And you'll be able to see this on the chart. So it's, it, as it gets closer and closer to 30 or above 30, the critical values for the t-distribution basically match the critical values of the standard normal. So you have a new table now, all right? So the table that I linked to this assignment and to resources is um, this table, right? Okay, so they're just wanting us to practice reading the table. What would be the T critical value, because we're gonna need that to construct our confidence interval, if the sample size is 12, and we want a 95% confidence. All right, well, we need to take the degrees of freedom. That's always one, or that's always uh, n minus one. So in this case, it's 11. And then we need to be looking at the table where it says 95%. So on the table that I have linked you to, we are going to be seeing the degrees of freedom here is 11, and the confidence interval, it's actually, actually at the bottom of your table, is 95%. So we just go ahead and see, okay, well, what is our T critical value? It is 2.0, or wait, 2.201. 
all right? And I'll be showing you how to do this on the calculator as well in a, um, during our example. So our T critical value, as you see here, is 2.201 for this particular problem. All right, next we're gonna see how do you create this confidence interval? Well, this looks very similar to what you did in 6.1. It's simply the point estimate, in this case it's a mean, plus or minus your margin of error. Well, your margin of error is your T critical value times the standard deviation over the square root N. From 6.1, we just changed one thing. We just changed the Z to a T now. The T critical value will depend on the level of confidence. You can find this with your chart, or I will show you another way to find this with your calculator. All right, so this is the formula we are gonna be using to find a confidence interval of something where N is less than 30 and the population standard deviation is unknown. Let's go into an example. Okay, here's our example. You want to estimate the true mean number of points scored by NFL teams. In order to do so, you select an SRS. Okay, that's why we're dividing that standard deviation um, by the square root of N. All right, so N is going to be 25. The point estimate, or the mean, is 17.2. Standard deviation is 6.3. Assume the distribution is normal. Construct a 99% confidence interval for the mean. Okay, here we go. Let's first use our formula. Our formula is x bar plus or minus the t critical value times standard deviation divided by the square root n. Well, first we need to find the t critical value, all right? So let's find our T critical value for N equals 25 at 99%. We can either use the chart, so let's use the chart first. Well, we need to see, well, what type, or what degrees of freedom do we need? Well, that's gonna be 25 minus one. So we're gonna use 24 as our degree of freedom, and we wanna be 99% confident. So it looks like our T critical value, if I'm looking at my chart, is 2.797. Okay, so using my chart, we just discovered that the T critical value in this situation would be 2.797. Well, I wanna show you how you can actually use your calculator to find this T critical value. Well, it's gonna be similar to what you did in 6.1. We want to be 99% confident, so I'm going to draw a normal looking curve and put 0.99 in the middle. Well, now I know that I'm still missing 0.01 of my distribution. If I divide that in half, I know that each of these little tails here is 0.005. Well, I want to find the T values that actually go here and here. Well, you're gonna be doing this by inverse T. So anytime you wanna go from an area to a critical value, you always wanna use the inverse. So we're gonna go menu, probability, distributions, inverse T. It's gonna ask you, well, what's the area? The area is 0 0.005, and then it asks you, what's the degree of freedom? Well, that's always one less than N. So 25 minus one is 24. Let's plug this in to the calculator. So I'm gonna go menu, probability, distributions, and now I go all the way down here to inverse T. I type in the area 0 0.005, the degrees of freedom 24, and I press okay. Well, it gives me this negative 2.79, and I could round this to seven. Well, that's what we got here, all right? So this negative 2.797 is the negative. Well, over here, this would be 2.797. When we use our T critical value, we use the positive value. All right, 
So now let's actually construct our confidence interval by doing the formula and then the calculator. The formula says, well, what is the point estimate? That's 17.2 plus or minus the T critical value we just found, 2.797 times the standard deviation, 6.3 over the square root of N. <laughs> well, what's N? N is, we already know N, N is 25. Okay, I'm going to calculate all of this in my calculator. 17.2 plus or minus, when I calculate this, I get 3.52422. Now I'm ready to find my lower and upper bound of the confidence interval. To find the lower bound, I do the point estimate and I subtract the margin of error. To find the upper bound, I do the point estimate and I add the margin of error. Okay, when I get that, or when I do that calculation, I end up with 13.6758 as the lower bound and 20.7242 as the upper bound. So now I know that the true population mean falls between these two values. We'll interpret this in a sentence in just one minute. Let's do this with our calculator as well. And I don't care which way you do it on the homework or the quiz or midterm. Okay, let's find the same confidence interval with our calculator. If you're gonna use your calculator instead of the formula, you go to menu, statistics, we go down to confidence intervals, that's six, and then we go to the T interval. We want to change this to statistics because we're not using data, we are using stats. So let me go up here and change this to stats, press OK. It's going to ask you for your X bar, that's going to be 17.2. The standard deviation of X is 6.3. N is 25, and we're going to change our confidence level to 0.99 and press OK. Well, what we're looking for here is the lower and the upper bound of our confidence, um, of our confidence interval. 13.6759 and 20.7241. And that is basically what we got here. These ones were just rounded with our formula. I will accept either answer. Well, you need to be able to interpret any confidence level. Whoa. I really need to change this. Okay, maybe I'll just move this down for a second. We need to be able to interpret the confidence level um, in words. So the way I would do this is we are 99% confident that the true population mean of number of points scored by NFL teams per game is between, all right, 13.6759 and 20.7241. All right, that's how you would interpret this confidence interval. And this slide just points you to page 322. It's saying, well, when should I use a Z interval and when should I use a T interval? Well, really, this is what I need you to worry about. When N is greater than or equal to 30, you're going to use the Z interval. And then when N is less than 30, you will use the T interval. Bye-bye.